Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2 CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 39, and this is what our diggers have dug up today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up we have a team dig. Matan Hirschberg and Captain Crazy Hat have dug up win games backslash unclassed backslash cigarette. Okay, this is either going to be spectacularly bad or spectacularly hilarious. Okay, all we've got is an exe and a text file. Desktop cigarette version 1.0, copyright 93, toggle booleans? <laughs> Toggle Bullion's Desktop Cigarette is the latest edition in our Desktop Metaphor series. Okay. Apparently the Desktop Cigarette contains 0 mg nicotine, 0 mg tar, and 0 mg carbon monoxide. Warning, smoking can reduce life expectancy of your bits. The Programmer General recommends using the Toggle Bullion's Bit Recycler once a week for maximum bit healthiness and happiness. Oh boy. Uh, the non-productivity pack. So is this thing supposed to be like a joke of some kind? Maybe? Well, let's see where we end up here. Well, there's the desktop cigarette, as it were. It's kind of burning. <laughs> is this serious? Light up another. Oh. I got two. More. More. I don't see this actually doing anything, really. I mean, they're flickering every so often, but... At this point, I'm kind of just seeing if I can crash windows. Okay, so I've generated a unhealthy number of cigarettes on the desktop, and... <laughs> I This really doesn't do anything. You seriously want to pay, pay $10 for something like this? That is what they were asking for, right? Oh, this is the same thing that had the Elvis detector. Or the same guys. I think it's starting to make sense to me now. It's almost like they had a whole bunch of these little programs that they packed together into a $10 package. And that they're not really meant to serve any purpose or anything. But then the question is, how did these end up as individual p programs in this, in this CD thing that I had? Okay, let's see if it was actually le legal for them to distribute this thing. Well, from what I can read here, it seems that... Yeah, you could actually distribute these little programs if you wanted to. Or you could buy them all for $10, even though you could theoretically just download them individually or... as a group, even. So... It's kind of weird. It's like freeware, but... Not if you wanted it directly from the company. I don't know. In any case, that's literally all this program is. <laughs> wow, that actually took a moment. Did you see that? I go to minimize. It has to draw up all the new all the cigarettes that I created. Oh, look at that. Some of them are actually like just butted out now. Huh. So I guess the cigarettes don't smoke forever. Or, in some cases, they're not even smoking at all, because there's just too many of them. <laughs> the graphics are just totally corrupted by this point. I'm not going to create any more, because now I have to close all these things. But, yeah, that was Desktop Cigarette, one of the most pointless programs on the history of the planet. Next up, Sean E. has dug up WinGames backslash GG backslash Cat, with an exclamation mark. Just a guess, but I'm going to guess this has something to do with cats, maybe? Cat is a small Windows 3.1 shareware program that runs a cat on your desktop by following the cursor. Are we seriously going to have nothing but desktop <laughs> icons today? Oh, jeez. Well, maybe this one will be more interesting just than just a smoking cigarette. Apparently made by Robert Danbar? Danbor? Something like that. Austria. Well, there's an interesting country to see a game from. Copyright 91 to 95. So, 
This is probably a later version than he originally came up with this in 91. Apparently wanted $5 for a registration, or $7 if you wanted a disc to go with that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the cat makes noises. Okay, so registration basically adds some extra functionality and also makes it so that the settings stay in place. And this is saying 94 here, so what's up with these copyrights? Oh, there's the cat. Cat is, um, very wireframe right now. He seems to run towards wherever I'm pointing the mouse cursor to. But he doesn't show up over the windows, though. So it'd probably work a little better if I didn't have this background going on. Let me change the background here. Okay, now we can see the cat a little better. And he's running along, chasing after the little cursor. Then he catches up to the cursor. He falls asleep. I'm guessing that's probably supposed to take longer, just from, but it's probably like because of how high the cycles count is and everything. Then when I move the cursor, cat wakes up, runs towards the cursor. So let's see here. It says here sound, but I haven't heard anything since initially opening the program. Now you can change the color of the cat. So you can have a red cat. Um, options for update frequency, travel distance. Hmm. Whoa, cat's zooming along now. And now the cat's moving really slow. Go, little kitty, run towards the mouse cursor. <laughs> I changed the update frequency, so now the animation is just going nuts. <laughs> uh, I clicked on the cat, and the cat disappeared. That was weird. Yeah, clicking on the cat closes it for some reason. You'd think that maybe clicking on the cat would actually produce, like, extra actions or something, but... Hmm. Oh, jeez, you can actually have it, like, leave trails behind. Okay, I think I've squeezed about as much enjoyment out of this as I'm gonna get. So, cat is just another one of these desktop icon programs. They really should have, like, made just a folder specifically dedicated to these on this CD, but... I suspect we're not done seeing these as we go through all of this. But I guess if you wanted a cat as your desktop icon following your cursor around, then, well, there you go. And lastly, Jim has dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash dwatch. I think I actually know what this is. Oh, it's way too many files. Um, you know, we got a file ID that is, that could tell us, but I think I'm just going to run whatever... That's all.exe. I'm not running that one. Um, fantgame.exe, begin.exe. Let's try begin. Ancients 1 Death Watch. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought it would be. Um, I haven't actually covered this on Ancient DOS games yet. The funny thing is, it almost has the same acronym. ADW instead of ADG. Um, basically, from what I understand, this is, um, yeah, this is a game that's basically like, well, as you can see right here, this is a 3D dungeon crawl on long lines of, well, I just reviewed um, Lands of Lore, but there's other ones like I Have to Beholder and Dungeon Quest, but basically that kind of game. But from what I understand, this is an indie title, and I don't actually know too much about it. I know that it's got a lot to it. Like, I mean, you've got, you can get items, you can equip characters... I don't know who these characters are. It must have just been built in with the whoever was testing this prior to putting it onto the shareware CD. But apparently we have a human priest, a human warrior, a human warrior, and a human mage. But let's actually um, take, a take a look at the character creation. We can figure out these buttons. Create character. Name a... Uh, Choose a race. Uh, I will be a dwarf. Choose a class. I will be a warrior. Um, Reroll stats. I'm guessing Dracos are like money. Like, I mean, a dwarf and warrior, you'd think you'd be able to get something higher than 18 for. Actually, have I even seen 18 yet? Maybe it's not rolling these stats like DD. And it's higher strength and dexterity. Might as well go with that. 
And then a bunch of portraits to choose between. Okay, so you do your character stuff outside of the actual gameplay. Uh, how do I get out of this win- oh, there we go. Ah. There's, there doesn't seem to be a way to back up when you make a mistake, which is kind of dumb. Save this character? No. Okay. Previous menu, journey onwards. So yeah, now the character I just created is in the party. Apparently it doesn't have strafing buttons. Actually, it doesn't have reverse either. So you can only move forwards and turn left and right. You can't go backwards and you can't strafe sideways. I mean, this is definitely a game I'm going to have to cover on Agent DOS games at some point, because there is a lot to this game from what I remember. Certainly more than I'm going to be able to get to... <coughs> Excuse me, certainly more than I'll be able to get to in just a single episode of Shovelware Diggers, but... Also, I can't even figure out where I'm going. Do I have a map of any kind? Your nose is assaulted with the scent stench of sewage. The sewer entrance. Use the door to enter. So I think it was... Well, let's examine. Use... There we go. Descending into the sewers. Darkness. Uh... Okay, um... I can't tell what I'm doing. <laughs> it's literally pitch black. Get out of here somewhat? Somehow? No? Okay, so just entering this door has brought me into a situation where I can't figure out what I'm doing. That's odd. Okay, there it goes. There's no message when you load the game, so you don't actually know if you've loaded it or not, unless you're, like, looking at the view here. Which I guess kind of makes sense, but still, you'd think there'd be a message to say that the game was loaded. Every one of these menu options actually has a message when you click on it. It's kind of annoying that you actually have to use the doors to do things here. And then move hand axe here, so you can't click and drag, everything is just clicking. Yeah, the controls in this game are very unusual, and that certain things that you'd think would do stuff don't do stuff. So it's kind of not user-friendly in that regards, so it's taking me a while just to sort of get around here. Like, I mean, when you're in here, you'd think, oh, click out of the window and you're done. Nope, you gotta click on the portrait. So you can click on any portrait to go to that character, but then to actually close this thing, you can't click on the tabs, you can't click off of it, you can't click on other people, you have to click on the portrait. Like, I mean, not even the escape key works. See, I'll give this game a proper review at some point, but if you guys are looking for an, like, an indie dungeon crawl done in a 3D perspective at a time when all the 3D dungeon crawls were much more professional affairs, then this is definitely one to look into. Although, I honestly have never played it before, so I have no idea how good it is. Well, at least Alt-F4 is helping me close all of these things.